so now it's going to be a Q&A time, despite the fact that no one submitted me questions. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to answer questions I've asked myself, because these are probably going to be the most complicated questions. And then you guys can ask me questions um, after this video is done, if you're interested in having any questions. And it probably won't be, since not a lot of people watch my videos. But, whatever. Number one, why is your YouTube so old, yet you don't have much old videos? Well, the answer to that question is that I simply deleted them all because they sucked. I used to be part of the gaming community, and I made some retarded-ass videos from about five minutes of Windows Movie Maker and some subtitles added to them and horrible grammar with a nice song that you would only hear for about 20 minutes. I always did have a good taste in music. 2. Are you still an anarcho-capitalist? Yes, despite the fact that I'm anti-hierarchies, I see that capitalism can exist without hierarchies. And I've said this before, despite the fact that I don't see an capitalism as the end-all be-all for any time in history, I feel that anarcho-capitalism will be best for a person like me, since that's the way I've been accustomed to for quite a while. 3. Are you still an agorist anti-statist? The reason this question might be taken seriously is because I've been talking about how the states that remain in the era of anti-statism won't have to succumb to anti-statism. But that doesn't make me someone who isn't an agorist. It just means that I feel like for my hometown here, yeah, that definitely needs to be devoid of states. For the United States, that's got to be anti-statist. There's got to be a lot of anti-statism, not just minarchism, not just weak states. I'm talking about no states. And the states that remain after this period, well, we're not going to like force them to become stateless because that's going to be pretty hard to do. It's very hard to enforce that since when you're the majority you'll always see that little stain. For what are your views on race? My views on race are very mixed. I usually switch from egalitarianism like from late 2009 to early 2010 to hereditarianism which is what I'm favoring right now but there's no safe say and usually it becomes one convoluted little machine that I want to avoid I want this to come to a philosophical resolve yeah, because this is much more than a political philosophy issue it deals with not like anarchism, hierarchies, or anti-statism states. This deals with society in general. Society is pretty damn big and pretty damn aggressive. Because it's people. Five. Can you call yourself a libertarian to begin with? The reason I ask myself that is because I'm not a traditional natural rights libertarian. I support polycentric law and a lot of different various rights. But, let's be honest, you can, despite the fact that you can attain much more rights and have a voluntary agreement for liabilities to be paid to whoever breaks these rights, <clears throat> no one will look at me as a standard libertarian who's one of those crazy minarchist, constitutionalist minarch libertarians. But in actuality, I consider myself a tremendous libertarian. Because libertarian involves advocating liberty in governments. To have the government grant a lot of liberty. And I feel like polycentric law will do a better job than what we traditionally have. So yes, I can call myself a libertarian from the start of my libertarian journey. Six, where else can you, I see your work? Well, my Justin TV account, 
and my Tumblr account all have the same username. You can try and find my works. I'll usually post the, the link to my shit so that you can see. Number six. What will you do in regards to your upcoming essays and books? I have to release two more essays, and I'm going to release my book afterwards. It's not going to be that big, only about 200 pages. Most of the content, I'm, I'm thinking of changing the name from against anti-disestablishmentarianism to something else, because really, uh, an Austrian made a similar title for a similar book called Against Leviathan. I don't want to seem like a ripoff of anyone or repetitive in any sort of manner. Seven, what will you do? Wait, no, I read that. Number eight, what will you do in the future with this channel? I was going to critique a lot more books. There were several projects that you think I wouldn't have gotten through with, like the four part video series that I actually did go through with. So, <laughs> there you go. I would critique more book, major books from major libertarian slash anarchist slash anti-statist writers. And there's going to be a lot. I already did about two. And that's what I'll deal with for a while. What else could I do? Well, I have a lot of stock videos. I make a lot more videos than you think. And I can release them every now and then because I'm not going to make as much um, videos live. I'm going to keep the long hair shave combo. I think that's a very successful combo. It, it does a very good job for my YouTube videos. So I'm just going to release videos that I kept unreleased for a while. And there's a lot of important ones. They just didn't make the cut in regards to priorities. Eight. What will you do in the future with this channel? What I'm going to... No, oh, fuck. I already answered that question. I'm way ahead of myself. Nine. What's your thoughts on free will versus determinism? Now, this used to be a subject which I was very, very obsessed with. I was a big fan of determinism, and I thought that free will was very arbitrary and ridiculous as a concept. But for now, whether it's free will or determinism, all I ascribe to is necessitarianism or necessitarian beliefs. The belief that although all is nihilistic, all is devoid of meaning, all is necessitarian, all is full of purpose. Everything's purposeful, yet as a nihilist, everything's devoid of meaning. And that's what I view. And ten. How do your views affect your affect your personal life? Well, it definitely affects my character. Seeing as I'm highly introverted, yet I don't have trouble socializing or saying anything in my views. I'm outspoken, sometimes overspoken in terms of non-philosophical subjects. But really, all my views do is make me more of what I already am and that's an asshole and you guys should know this by now since I have the douche cast constantly running on JTV so these answer the these are the answers to 10 questions I've ascribed to myself if you guys have any questions that you wanna send me I'll wait for that to add up and then I'll make my own um, video addressing all all of what you guys say and that'll be my last video like this before you gotta see me looking this good in a stock video